Good afternoon. Um, section 7.2, trigonometric integration. So to motivate, we start with a simple example, sine cubed x dx. Find the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of this. So we are going to use a trick. Okay. I'm going to split off. So you have three powers of sine here. I'm going to split off one of them and say that this is sine squared x times sine x dx. Okay. So now you notice that this is kind of a derivative of a cosine. Right? So with this idea in mind, I want to express everything in terms of cosines. And that's very easy because uh, of the following identity. Sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. Do you remember this? So sine squared is easily expressible in terms of cosine. Okay, And here I have sine x dx. So now substitution is uh, obvious. I'm going to say that u is equal to cosine x and du is minus sine x dx, in which case this integral can be expressed as minus 1 minus u squared du. Okay. And um, what did I use here? I used that the fact that d, <coughs> dx of sine x is cos x, uh, or rather, I used this one, d dx cosine x is sine x. So one of these I used to evaluate this integral. And now uh, we're almost done. Professor, I think that's negative sine x. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. So this is important because it, we have a minus sign because of this. So I have u plus u cubed over 3. Or I can, uh, I have to rewrite it back in, in the original variables, cos x plus cos cubed x over 3 plus c. OK, so uh, these kind of rules allowed me to evaluate this integral. Um, and what else was important for this? You see, one of the steps, the first initial step, was to split off one power of sine. OK, so it's here. Uh, and the rest, sine square x, was expressible in terms of cosine uh, by using this identity. So it was kind of lucky that this term was sine squared. If it was sine cubed, I would not be able to do this because I wouldn't know how to express sine cubed uh, from this identity. Sine to the fourth, though, would be OK because it would be just this squared. So uh, let me write down uh, the fourth uh, condition that I used here. We noticed that we had an odd power of sine. Okay. So this is what helped me. I'll show you the next example to make this uh, clear. So let's look at cos 5x sine squared x dx. Let's look at that one. So now I'm going to split off the power of cosine. So uh, I have sine squared x. One power of cosine goes to the dif differential. So I have cos fourth x times cos x dx. Now, uh, why is this a better expression than this? Because I can use these rules. So first of all, I notice that this is d dx of sine x 
right? And sine squared x is already in terms of uh, x. Cosine fourth I can express in terms of sine x in the following way. So cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. Cosine fourth x is this thing squared. So I use a substitution. u equals sine x. Okay. du is cosine x dx. And I rewrite this expression as follows. u squared, then I have 1 minus u squared squared du. You see, so it was good that this power was fourth. I was able to use this identity and simply square it to get uh, cosine in terms of sine or in terms of u. Okay? So here I had an odd power of cosine, and I used it. Let me finish uh, this so you have the complete picture. So we have u squared. Now we have to expand this, the squares. <coughs> the rest is quite um, standard. I'm not forgetting to rewrite this in terms of sine again. Okay, so this is the answer. Um, so with these two examples, either sine or cosine occurred uh, with, uh, with an odd power, and I used these rules. Okay. Now what happens if the power is uh, even? So if both are even, so let's look at an example uh, where we have cos squared x dx. So the power of sine here is 0, which is considered even, uh, and the power of cosine is 2. Uh, these rules won't work. Um, and then I have to use different rules. So here I write down two identities for you to remember, OK? So sine squared x and cos squared x can be expressed in terms of um, the double angle. Okay. These are called half angle identities, which I want you to know. Okay, so we use the second one of them to evaluate this integral. What I don't like about this integral is the second power. If I use the identity, I get the first power. So I get 1 plus uh, cos 2x dx. What do I do next? The next is easy, right? The antiderivative of this is x over 2 plus sine 2x over 2 plus c. Over 4, actually. Um, another one, let's look at a more complex one. Cos fourth x dx. What do I do now? I use the same identity. I say that cos squared is 1 half 1 plus cos 2x. I square the whole thing to get the fourth power. And I'm good. Question? Uh, yeah. We substituted cosine squared with a half angle formula, didn't we? Cosine squared. Oh, so this should be sine. You're right. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay. 
So the fourth power is the same thing squared. What if I had the sixth power? Then I would take the same formula and raise it to the third power. Okay. So uh, I can do any power if it's even by using uh, one of these formulas. So in this case, I have one quarter and integral of one plus two sine two x plus sine squared two x. And then I look at it, I say, oh, I have another square here, right? So what, what needs to be done? I go back and I use, I have angle identity uh, for the other one, for this one. So let's continue writing. Um, I have one plus two sine two x. So sine squared is one half one minus cos of what? Four, right? Sine squared of two x, two x becomes four x. Okay. Dx. Uh, and at this stage, uh, I can simply take the integral. So I have x plus minus cos 2x plus x over 2 minus <coughs> sine 4x over 4 plus c. over 8. So lots of uh, factors of 2. Questions? Question? Why is it sine 4x again? So uh, this is an antiderivative of cosine 4x. So why is this sine, uh, cosine 4x? Because of this, right? This uh, sine squared x is 1 half 1 minus <coughs> cos 2x. Sine squared alpha x is 1 half 1 minus cos 2 alpha x. So if this is 2x, this becomes 4x. If this is 3x, this is 6x. OK, that's why I got uh, 4x over here. Question? Can you show how you get sine 4x over 8 like So I have to take the, what is the antiderivative of cos 4x? That is sine 4x over 4. The number 8 comes from this factor 2. So, so let me summarize everything that we found. So basically, we have looked at uh, integrals that involve powers of sine and cosine and nothing else. So we look at integrals of, um, I don't know, sine uh, k x cos j x dx, things like this. Okay? Depending on the powers, we have different uh, techniques. So Number one, yes, if power of cosine is odd, we split, uh, save one power of cosine and use the substitution u equals sine x. If the power of sine is odd, we save or split one power of sine and use u equals cosine x. Here in brackets, what if both of them are odd? Then I don't care, I can use either. Okay? If both powers are odd, it's the easiest case. I can either 
use this substitution or that substitution. Uh, the harder case is when neither of those hold. In this case, we have both powers are even. And then we use double angle identities or half angle identities. Use half identities. As you uh, have seen, sometimes you have to use them more than once. Okay. Questions? So all these cases are mapped out here. There's nothing else, no surprises. It's a clear algorithm which tells you what to do. The next topic is when we uh, go to tangents and secants, and then it's a little bit more interesting. So to draw an analogy, actually, let me use this part of the blackboard. Um, we're going to look at um, things like tangent k x uh, secant uh, j x dx. And it's kind of analogous because we have an identity. So here we have sine squared x plus cos squared x. What's the analogy here? We have secant squared x equals 1 plus tangent squared x. So it's, it's very similar. And we know how to differentiate um, tangent. What's that? That's secant squared x. And when we differentiate secant, we get secant tangent. Right? You know these rules. So the analogy is that they're completely kind of interchangeable. The derivative of one is expressed in terms of the other, more or less. So the, uh, and they satisfy this nice identity, which involves squares of the two things. So hopefully, we'll be able to integrate such objects. Um, and we start from some simple examples. So the first one. Let's look at tangent squared x secant fourth x dx. So you have to know the tricks. Okay, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to save two powers of secant. So I, I have tangent squared x secant squared x times secant squared x dx. So I saved two, and that's going to be the derivative of a tangent. <coughs> so I say u equals tangent x. So du is just that, secant squared x dx. OK, so this guy is du. Uh, now, this is u squared because it's tangent. How about secant squared? For that, I go to the identity, and I realize that secant squared is 1 plus u squared. So this whole thing becomes u squared 1 plus u squared du. Um, and do you allow me to put dot, dot, dot here? Because this, this is easy, right? OK. So what was the trick? I saved two powers of secant to make the derivative of a tangent. Now let's look at the next example. Tangent cubed x, secant fifth x dx. OK. So here, I'm going to save one of each. OK. I'm going to save one tangent. So I have tangent squared x and one secant, secant fourth x. So I have tangent x, secant x dx. What is this? What I saved, I'm arranging for uh, myself to have a derivative of a secant. So u is secant x. Therefore, this is du. This is u to the fourth, because it's just secant. And tangent 
is secant squared minus 1. So this is u squared minus 1. So the whole thing becomes u squared minus 1, u to the fourth, du dot, dot, dot. Uh, and there is a certain pattern to this, right? So what I want to achieve is the following. You see, in the first example, uh, my new variable is a tangent. So whatever uh, under my integral is already expressed in terms of tangent, I don't care what it is. It could be tangent to the first power, second, third, any function that I don't care. Secret is a problem, because this is the one I will have to uh, express in terms of tangent through the squares. So the remaining power of secant has to be even. And I, so I saved two of those, so I should have started with an even power. So this has to be even, and this is even. So this uh, it gives me my first case um, under this heading. If secant is even, okay, then we save what? Secant squared x, and we make the substitution u equals tangent x. Okay. If the power of secant is even, when I save two of those, the remaining power of secant is even, and I can use this. This is the uh, point here. In the second example, I saved one power of tangent, one power of secant. So my variable was uh, secant. So I want the tangent to be even. So uh, the remaining tangent is even. So I have to start with tangent is odd. And there is some, uh, at least, one secant. So in this case, we save. Uh, tangent x secant x and use u equals secant x. Okay. So these are two cases, but unfortunately they do not exhaust all logical possibilities. Uh, so what is left here? I'm going to say the following. So let's suppose that um, secant Neither, let's suppose that neither of these holds, OK? Secant is odd, and tangent is even. Then I don't know yet. All right, we'll put a question mark. And there's a fourth possibility. Tangent <coughs> is odd, and there is no secant. So if, it, if tangent is odd uh, and there's no secant, I cannot save one power of secant to arrange for this. Okay, so that's another thing that we'll have to explore. And these are difficult. So let me start uh, from, so maybe we can number them. So this is A, B, C, and D. I'm going to start with case uh, C. <coughs> so um, secant is odd, tangent is even. Let's design the simplest example uh, of a power where uh, secant is odd. So I say secant x, first power. Tangent is even. The smallest even power is uh, 0. So no tangent. dx. Okay. So this is my first example. And you won't believe how difficult this is to take. It requires a substitution, uh, which I believe is very difficult to guess, unless you know uh, the trick. So let me show you. It's very strange. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. Uh, secant x, okay, and I'm going to 
multiply and divide this by uh, the same thing. So this is secant x plus tangent x divided by secant x plus tangent x dx. So nobody can say that this is wrong, right? I divide and multiply by the same thing, but why, right? It's, uh, it seems completely arbitrary. So then I use a substitution. Let's set u to be that. Secant x plus tangent x. And just try it. Okay. So the next step is always to calculate du. Uh, so uh, secant x tangent x plus secant x squared. Okay. Um, so I'm going to continue writing here by multiplying through the numerator by the secant. So I have secant squared x plus tangent x secant x secant x plus tangent x dx. So I haven't done anything but multiplied through. And now you notice that the expression in the numerator actually coincides dx here, coincides with this derivative. Right? It's like magic. So what I have on top is just du. What do I have in the denominator? u. Look at this. OK, so it works. Uh, and it takes some clever person to guess, right? Uh, it's completely not trivial. So uh, what's the uh, antiderivative? That's a log of the absolute value of this. Uh, so we have a log of that whole thing. Um, secant x plus tangent x plus c. OK. So the antiderivative of secant is evaluated like this and is expressible in uh, elementary functions in this way. Okay. It's a good idea to memorize it, to memorize these steps and to memorize the answer, maybe. Okay. So uh, that was the simplest non-trivial example of part C. Secant is odd, tangent is even. Uh, I'm going to uh, next consider the next simplest case, uh, which is secant cubed x dx. Right? Um, so, again, like with many of these uh, in part C, there is no, unfortunately, there is no algorithm or rule that you can just apply, okay? You kind of, it's kind of like an art here. And uh, each case uh, happens to be different. So this one, uh, uh, if you have done enough of them, perhaps you can uh, discern some patterns. Uh, so. Let's practice. So with this one, I'm going to split off secant squared like this. Um, and now we're going to use um, differentiation, uh, integration by parts. Okay. So I'm going to set two functions. U is secant x, and V prime is secant squared x. OK, uh, so it's easy to find uh, u squared. u squared is secant tangent x. And v is the antiderivative of secant squared. So this is tangent. So let's try to take this guy by parts by using the usual formula, secant x tangent x minus secant x tangent squared x dx. OK, not clear what we gained. But uh, let's continue. And we notice that we, here we have tangent squared. And we are going to express it in terms of a, a secant. Okay. Secant x tangent x minus secant x secant squared x minus 1 dx. 
and I'm going to open the brackets here. Secant x tangent x minus secant cubed x plus secant x dx. So uh, a lot of calculations, and what is the result? On the left, you find the inter integral of secant cubed. And on the right, you find blah, 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 secant cubed x, the same thing. Okay, so actually, we arrived at an equation which involves the unknown integral as a variable. Uh, I bet you saw that the day before yesterday. I wasn't here, but uh, one of the integrals that you take by parts involves this technique. So I'm going to call this i. i. So what do I know about i now? I know that i is equal to secant x tangent x uh, minus i plus secant x dx. And this is not a bad equation. You can solve it, definitely. It's, not, it's an easy equation. We can say that i, I bring it over to this uh, side, right, is equal to 1 half secant x tangent x plus secant x dx. Finally, I'm going to use my first example. Question? Uh, you lost. <laughs> Which, uh, is this clear? Where do you get tangent squared? This one? Yeah. Oh, so this is um, over here. Let's, let's uh, elaborate on this step. So it's equal to uh, uv yeah. minus an integral of u prime v, right? This is the usual formula. Uh, so this is uv. Uh, and so what is u prime v? I have to take this line. u prime is secant tangent, and we have v, which is tangent. I just multiply them together. Mm -hmm. So I have secant tangent tangent. I got you. Question? I was going to ask, would, could you also split the secant cubed into 1 plus tangent squared fragments? Because that, that would also be equal to secant plus tangent squared secant, wouldn't it? Fragments. So. You're saying that this is 1 plus tangent squared times secant. Times secant. Which then would multiply out to secant plus secant tangent squared. OK, and then what? Well, then you can integrate them both separately. You have to deal with the integral of secant by itself anyway. That's really the ugliest one. And so the secant is easy, yes? How about this one? Uh, well, that one you can do the u substitution, or? Uh, no, you can't. can't. Well, there was <laughs> It doesn't fall into any of these categories. So tangent is not odd, uh, and uh, secant is not even. So the, see, this is tough, because by doing this, you cannot read. Uh, a nice uh, thing would be to reduce it to one of these. And uh, uh, this proposition doesn't lead to any. So perhaps there is another way of doing it. And perhaps it starts here, but I don't know where to go from here. OK? Good question. So <coughs> let's write down the answer here. So it's 1 half, and we have secant x tangent x plus this logarithm of secant x plus tangent x plus c. Okay. So this is uh, how you can evaluate such an integral. Questions? So the trick here was to see uh, integration by parts, okay, where it wasn't really obvious, and then find an equation for i. So basically, we reduce it to the same thing. Okay. So now, 
and you realize that these are two case studies of um, case C, and there is no general rule. Okay, so uh, there, I think there may be another example in the textbook, but uh, the, uh, there is no general rule. Now let's look at case D. Tangent is odd, and there is no secant. So basically, uh, odd powers of tangent. And the first one is really easy. I don't know what to write. Okay, I'll write here. So, case D, basically uh, any uh, odd power of tangent, what's the simplest integral of type uh, D? Tangent x dx, okay? And that is easy. What we do is we say that tangent is sine x over cos x dx. And what's the next step? Substitution. You say that um, u is cos x and du is minus sine x dx. So this is du over u. Like this. So it's a hidden substitution. Sine x over cos x, and the sine is a derivative of cosine. So we end up with a log. Questions? OK. Uh, the next case, uh, we are looking for odd tangents, no secant. So the next one, obviously, is tangent cubed x dx. Uh, so what do we do here? We are going to split off tangent squared, OK? Tangent x, tangent squared x dx. And for this one, we are going to use the identity, uh, where we express it in terms of secant. And now we open the brackets. Tangent x secant squared x dx minus tangent x dx. Um, so tangent x secant squared actually does happen to be one of the simple cases. Is this one? You can see that secant is even. Okay, so uh, this one we can do easily. Uh, and this one we just did. This is the uh, first power of tangent. So for this integral, we can use a substitution u equals tangent x, okay? And du is secant squared x dx. So let's continue. We have u du simply minus m. For this one, we use the result that we obtained, log of cos x, OK? Uh, so we have u squared over 2 and finally we rewrite it in terms of tangent. And that's the answer. So normally with these ones, uh, you can reduce them to a previously solved one, just like this. OK. Um, okay. Uh, so now the last little topic for today is a slightly different type of trigonometric integrals. Uh, it has a different form. So instead of powers of sines and cosines, we're going to look at the following combination. Sine mx uh, cos 
nx dx. So these are not powers. These are arguments of the sine and cosine are given by mx and nx, where n and m and n are some numbers, some constants. Um, so this is not the only type. We could have, for instance, sine mx sine nx, or we could have cos mx cos nx. Okay? There are three different types. Sine, cosine, sine, sine, and cos, cos. Uh, and these are easy, okay? Because here we have a fast rule. We have a rule that if we follow it, we are guaranteed uh, to have a successful integration. The rule involves um, identities of the following type. So let me write them down. Uh, on the left, I'm going to have a product of sine and cosine of different arguments. Okay? So product on the left. On the right, I'm going to have a summation, uh, which is a lot easier to integrate. So I have 1 half sine of a minus b plus sine a plus b, like this. So I'm going to have three of those. The next one involves sine A, sine B. Okay. Similarly, I end up with a sum, cos A minus B minus cos A plus B. And the thir third one is cos A, cos B. The ones on the left are hard to integrate. The ones on the right are easy to integrate. That's what we're, we're using them. Um, let's consider a specific example. Uh, sine 6x, sine 11x dx. Okay. So which formula are we going to use? Sine, sine. It's the second formula here. So I'm going to rewrite the expression under the integral as 1 half of cosine of 6x minus 11x uh, minus cos of 6x plus 11x dx. Simplify. So here I have a cos of minus 5x minus cos of 17x dx. And remember that cosine is an even function, so cosine of minus 5x is the same as cos 5x. Now it's very easy. I have to take the antiderivative of these things. There is one little hidden step here, which is a substitution. I can say u is equal to 5x. Okay, that gives me sine 5x over 5 minus sine of 17x over 17 plus c. So these are always done in a standard uh, way. Questions? Very good, thank you.